my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllerieTutors.com and welcome to this video on measuring enthalpy change uh, and this is the first part of a series of videos in looking into measuring enthalpy change and in particular uh, we're going to look at the enthalpy change when we combust a fuel to heat up a container of water and um, there is another video that looks into enthalpy change when we mix two solutions together into a beaker so for example that could be something like neutralization reactions so um, if that's the type of video that you're looking for, if you just click on the link below, you can have a look at that video there. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at what enthalpy actually is. And enthalpy is given the um, value delta, or is given the symbol, sorry, delta H. Delta meaning a change in, H standing for enthalpy. And we've also got the little underground symbol at the top right hand corner there, which basically means everything's done in standard conditions. So um, the units are in kilojoules per mole. And that's gonna be really important when we do the calculation later on. And enthalpy change is actually defined as heat energy transferred in a reaction of constant pressure. So basically it's energy moving from one form to another uh, in a fixed amount of pressure. And this is basically a value we can use to compare against other reactions. Okay, and we're going to be using a, uh, a reaction or this equation here to help us to work out an example question. So um, you can see here we've got Q equals MC delta T. Sounds like some funky DJ. Uh, the Q bit stands for energy, which is measured in joules. The M bit is, uh, is stands for the mass of the water or the solution that we are heating up. Again, if this is mixing two liquids together, like a neutralization reaction, it's the combined mass of both liquids, but there is a separate video on that. Uh, and this is measured in grams, so density is gonna be important here. Uh, C is the heat capacity. This is given a value of 4.18. You'll be given this in the exam, so you don't need to remember this. The units are joules per gram per Kelvin. Uh, and the last bit is delta T. Uh, again, we know what the delta bit means. Delta bit means change. So delta T is the change of temperature of the water or solution that we are actually heating up. Okay, and like I said, we're going to do a very specific example, and this is where we're going to use a spirit burner or a fuel to heat up a fixed volume of water. And you can see the um, experiment set up here. We have the clamp stand, we have the fuel at the bottom here, and we have our beaker of water with the thermometer in. And basically, we're going to heat it up, and we're going to um, measure the temperature change of it. And from that, we can actually work out how much energy has been transferred from the fuel to the actual um, beaker. Now, I just want to talk about a little bit about this practical and how it's set up. As you can see, we do have our beaker there and we have our spirit burner underneath. Um, now, the key thing is actually um, we need to put some shielding around this as well. So that could be bench mats or some kind of cover around this. Because actually what happens is um, the flame from the actual spirit burner flickers around quite a bit. Uh, and um, that's with the wind running through the, running through the room. So because it's flickering, what it's doing is it's actually spending a lot of time heating up the surroundings and not directly heating up the water above it. Uh, now this could pose some problems experimentally because you get your results and the because some of the energy is not, or not all the energy is being used to heat up the water, you get a false result. In fact, that the actual, the amount of fuel used has been slightly higher um, than what was actually needed because a lot of it's been wasted. So um, in terms of enthalpy values, uh, it would come out a little bit higher than normal. So it's a really good idea to make sure that you have your uh, your practical screened off. Um, another thing as well is that actually your beaker of water or your tin of water should actually be uh, really, it should be insulated or put a lid on the top of it. Uh, and the reason why is because again, if we heat up our container of water, um, quite often the water will, the heat, sorry, heat energy will escape from the water into the surroundings. Again, that means you're using more energy than, than you need to, to actually heat up your water to a specific temperature. So putting a lid on it or insulating it helps to reduce heat loss to the surroundings, which is a, which is a key thing. Okay, um, and also if you were to repeat this experiment, you've got to make sure that the uh, flame, the height of the beaker is actually the same distance away from the flame. Uh, if it's obviously closer, um, it may heat up a little bit quicker. Um, so as long as you're consistent, that's the main thing. And all these little how science works questions are really, really important uh, as this is emphasized as a, as a practical skill. Okay, so 
Obviously, we're going to use this um, experiment set up here, and we're going to use this example question here to see how we can use Q equals MC delta T to work out the enthalpy change of a fuel when it's heating water. Um, now, um, this, you might think, well, what's the point in this? Um, this is actually used quite a lot in the food industry when they are trying to use something called bomb calorimetry. Uh, and this is basically where they take a bit of food, they ignite the food, which obviously turning the energy that's stored in the food, turning it into heat energy, and then that's used to heat a container of water. Now, obviously, in bomb calorimetry, um, it's in a very sealed, contained uh, space, so the chance of heat loss are minimised, which is crucial. Uh, and actually, all energy is measured in kilojoules, or calories is a specific uh, unit for uh, food energy. So this is actually very, very useful. And when you look on the packet of your biscuits and you see that it's got a large amount of energy in it, that's how they've measured it, using bomb calorimetry. Okay, so we're going to look at this example here. So we've got 1.07 grams of ethanol was used to raise the temperature of 100 grams of water from 293 Kelvin to 373 Kelvin. And we want to calculate the enthalpy change of ethanol. Now we can't calculate the enthalpy change, which is delta H, by using Q equals MC delta T directly. Remember, Q is only telling us the energy, not the enthalpy change. And that's, there's a big difference between that. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to work out um, energy first. So I'm just going to put that on there. So there's your energy. Energy is measured in Q. To measure the enthalpy change, we have to divide the energy that we calculate from here to work out, and we have to then work out the number of moles to work out our enthalpy change. So energy um, is going to be the mass times C times delta T. So in this case, the mass is going to be 100, and we're going to write this in write this in red. So we're going to put that in there. Q equals, and we've got 100. Now, it's 100 grams of water. It's the mass of the liquid we're heating up, not the fuel that we're using here. So it's 100 grams, and we're going to multiply that by 4.18. And we're then going to multiply that by 80, because that's our temperature change from there. Okay, so if you put all this into your calculator, um, you should come out with a value of 33440. And this is in joules. Now, this is really important, actually. Um, we need to put a negative sign in front of that. And the reason why is because this reaction is exothermic. We're actually combusting a fuel, so it's giving out heat energy. Now, what we can do is, is simplify that because we need to get it into um, kilojoules per mole when we're working out enthalpy change. It may be a good idea to convert this at this point into kilojoules. That's dead easy. All you do is you just divide by a thousand, move the decimal point back three spaces. So that's going to be 33.44 kilojoules. There you go. That's our energy, not the enthalpy. OK, so there's our energy value. We need to work out the enthalpy. It's dead easy. Uh, energy value we now know uh, divided by the number of moles. So the enthalpy change, which is delta H, is Q, which we know is that, and we're going to write it in, we're going to write it in kilojoules. Remember to put the minus in front of there, 33.44, that's in kilojoules, and we're going to divide that by the number of moles. Now, we need to work this out, and um, you should know that the number of moles is mass over MR, so the mass of the fuel, remember we talked about the fuel here, the energy change of the fuel. So the number of moles is the mass of the fuel. This is 1.07. So we're going to put that there. That's where we bring that mass in. So we're not using the mass of the liquid here because we're talking about the fuel. Uh, divided by the MR. So the fuel we said was ethanol. Uh, and so the MR of ethanol is 46. Okay, there we go. And this tells us the number of moles that we need to work out. So if we put that into our calculator, we should get 0 0.023. Okay, so there's our enthalpy change, which is the kilojoules per mole, and this is in moles. Again, if you think about the units, kilojoules per mole, it kind of prompts you. You must have an energy value and you must have the number of moles, so that, that might prompt you a little bit. Uh, and then if we stick that in our calculator, we should come out with a final value. Again, it's got to be negative because it's exothermic of 1453.91, and this is kilojoules per mole. There you go. 
Uh, and that gives us our final value. This is our entropy change. Remember to put that sign in. You actually will get this wrong if you don't put the sign in because it's obviously exothermic. So really, really simple mistake. Loads of people miss it out. Don't do it. Make sure it's there. But there you go. That's how you work it out. Um, using Q equals MC delta T, um, we are being able to use, we we'll calculate the energy. From that, we can then calculate the entropy change, which is delta H. Um, and there's our final value there. It's always in kilojoules per mole. And make sure you understand about how you can control this practical to make sure you're getting a fair set of results or reliable set, should we say. That's it. Bye-bye.